Six of the eight games on Sunday in Week 12 to get things started were decided between eight points or less. It was a very exciting start to the day, and I'm joined by associate editors Dan Parr and Arthur Arkers to break it all down. We had some playoff implicating games going on, and Dan, we'll start with you. You're our NFC South expert. Tampa Bay Buccaneers fall to the Falcons 24-23. A few turnovers in this game for Atlanta, but they're able to hang on for a win and really kind of almost seal the NFC South. Yeah, they're 10-1 and one now. They've been in the driver's seat all season in the NFC South. They're still there, still looking like the number one seed in the NFC with uh, five games left on the schedule for them, including a Thursday nighter against the Saints coming up next. Uh, really, you saw the return of their run defense against the Buccaneers. Held them to 21 carries for 50 yards rushing. Doug Martin just didn't have a lot of room to run. Scored two touchdowns, so he had some impact runs, but didn't have a run longer than 10 yards. And this is a Falcons run defense that hadn't played very well of late. Been gashed in each of the past two weeks by the Saints and Cardinals, two of the worst rushing offenses in the league. So uh, that's been an up and down for the Falcons this uh, season, that run defense. Let's see if they can become more consistent down the stretch. That'll make a big difference for them. And despite that, the Bucks still had a chance to win the game. There'll be some debate about whether Greg Schiano made the right calls down the stretch, but uh, they just didn't have enough at the end to uh, come back after falling behind by a point uh, about midway through the fourth quarter. It would have been a huge win for Tampa Bay. Now they're stuck with a lot of other teams fighting for those NFC wild card spots. We'll stay in the South, but go to the other conference, the AFC, your division, Arthur. The Indianapolis Colts, they didn't necessarily look that pretty throughout the game, but they get a win over the Buffalo Bills and actually get a one game lead in that AFC wild card spot thanks to a Pittsburgh Steelers loss. So they're kind of sitting in a very comfortable position at this point, but maybe the Colts might have expected a better outing against Buffalo. Yeah, I don't think it was a pretty win, as you said, but, you know, they took care of business. They got back home after obviously getting humbled a little bit out in Foxborough last week. So uh, a recipe for success for them is heading back to Lucas Oil Stadium, where they've been a different football team this season. So while I thought that the, the line play wasn't great on either side of the ball, they did make enough plays. My takeaway was just the, the, the fingerprints of Ryan Grigson, the effect he's had on this football team. You look at a T.Y. Hilton becoming the first Colt in history to have both a return touchdown and a receiving touchdown in the same game. Joel Freeman, former CFL star, all over the football field, 16 tackles and a sack. So these guys that Grixon brought in, some of them maybe not coming with a whole lot of you know fanfare, but they made a big impact today. And then, of course, Reggie Wayne keeps on taking another 100-yard receiving game. Grixon, of course, re-signed him in the offseason. So Andrew Luck doesn't have to be at his absolute best when a lot of other things are going right. And uh, they took care of business when they needed to. And that loss for the Buffalo Bills all but knocks Buffalo out of the playoff fund in the AFC Wild Card. They were four and seven. A couple teams that really solidified their playoff positions. Starting with the Chicago Bears, they needed a win on Sunday after that Monday night debacle against San Francisco. Get Jay Cutler back. Beat the Vikings 28 to 10. Had some you know defense stepped up in this one, and Chicago got the big win. But Minnesota tough for them to get in that NFC Wild Card hunt. Back to the AFC, the Denver Broncos hang on for a 17-9 win. Romeo Cornell. Just seems to be able to find ways to slow down Peyton Manning, but the Broncos are able to get that win, and the Chiefs keep reeling the Broncos cruising to that AFC West title. And then some issues for some teams looking for that playoff spot, starting with the Pittsburgh Steelers, losing 20-14 to uh, to the Cleveland Browns. Cleveland forced eight turnovers in this one. We knew it was going to be tough for Pittsburgh with Charlie Batch in a quarterback. I don't think anybody expected it to be this sloppy for Pittsburgh, and now they're tied with the Cincinnati Bengals fighting for that second AFC wildcard spot. Miami Dolphins get a big win, winning 24-21. Seattle's road Road woes continue uh, for the Dolphins still hanging on by a thread in the AFC playoff conversation while the Seahawks are need to find a way to win on the road if they want to stay in the NFC playoff picture. We'll still have a few games left on Sunday. We'll catch those in our Snap Judgments Part 2, which you can check on our YouTube page. And be sure to head to our website at ProFootballWeekly.com.